Okay, well, uh, welcome everybody. My name is Maddie Whittle. I am a member of the programming team at Film at Lincoln Center and uh, part of the selection team for this year's Rendezvous with French Cinema. That's the 26th edition. We're very happy to be here, even if only virtually. Uh, I'm very uh, pleased to be here for today's Q&A with uh, filmmaker Francois Ozon, whose film Summer of 85, uh, you have hopefully just watched in our virtual cinema or are about to watch along with the two stars of the film, Félix Lefebvre and uh, Benjamin Voisin, uh, who play Alexis and David in the film. Uh, so I will uh, ask a few questions and, and uh, we can just take it from there. Um, so uh, Francois, I'll start with you. Uh, Summer of 85 is based on a novel uh, called Dance on My Grave. Uh, it's a British novel uh, that was published in 1982. And I was wondering if you could just talk a bit about how you came to the novel, how you um, arrived um, at the adaptation. Actually, I read the novel when I was 17, 17 years old in 85. Uh, that's why the title of the film. And uh, when I read the book, I fell in love with it because it was quite uh, surprising at this time, at this period to read a book about uh, young gay love without guilt. And uh, so it was very touching. And as a teenager, I was very moved. And uh, I didn't know at this time I will become one day one director. It was like a dream. And I said to myself, if one day I become a director, I want this book uh, as my first feature. And actually, I had to wait 35 years to, <laughs> to adapt uh, the book in a film. It was. Uh... What was the process like? Was it something that, uh, how, did you, how did you sort of arrive at it uh, after I all think, that? Uh, I think I wanted to be first the spectator of the film more than the director. During a long time, I was waiting for another director, uh, for an American director. I, I had the feeling it was the perfect material for a teen, American teen movie. You know, so I was thinking maybe Gus Van Sant, maybe Bob Reiner, some, this kind of director who made some great film in the 80s or 90s will adapt it, but it never happened. And it's funny because when I talked with Aidan Chambers, the, the writer of the book, he said to me, many directors wanted to make it, but European directors, a Danish one, an Italian one, and a French one, but they didn't uh, succeed to find the money and to, to, to make the adaptation. So. So after By the Grace of God, which was a very important film for me, but it was very heavy because of the, of the topic, I wanted to go to something more lighter. And, uh, and I read again the book and I realized I was still in love with this story. And I, I thought maybe it was the right time to, to dare uh, to make my real adaptation of this book. Maybe well, I was too close before to make the adaptation. Maybe I was uh, too, too close to the characters. Now I'm an old man, an old director. I have enough distance to, 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 to be able to tell this story, I think. It's a very nostalgic film. It feels like uh, an, an adult looking back on a time in their life. No, I don't think it's nostalgic. It's the period which is nostalgic because what we are living today, it was very surprising because uh, when the film was released in France, it was after the first lockdown and people were so happy to, to watch the 80s and they felt nostalgia because of what we were living because it was impossible to go to a nightclub, to kiss each other, to have, uh, to have some, some good time together. So we, are, we had the feeling that in the 80s it was better, but actually it wasn't better. We had many problems in the 80s. We had AIDS and, uh, and politically it was difficult too. So it's just, uh, it just the distance of time which gives the, 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 the idea of nostalgia. But personally, I have no, no nostalgia for the 80s. <laughs> what uh, what um, influenced the setting, the decision of the setting to set it in Normandy instead of uh, Britain um, or elsewhere in France? First, I didn't know maybe it could have been a good idea to, to shoot in England because it's a very British book. But uh, my English is not good enough, as you can hear, so I thought it would be easier for me to make it in French. So I tried to find an equivalent of uh, the place in the book. In the book, it's in the uh, south, east south of England, a small um, beach city. I don't know how do you say that. Uh, une cité balnéaire anglaise. 
uh, a seaside resort. A seaside, seaside. voilà. And uh, I tried to find the equivalent in France. First, my idea was to shoot in Brittany because I know very well the Brittany. But I realized it was not the right place. And I discovered uh, the high Normandy, uh, the poor Normandy, actually. And uh, it was perfect because it was uh, working class places and it was... Uh, It, uh, all the, all the, the buildings are with the red bricks, like in England, so there are many equivalents, and, uh, and I think Le Treport is the best place to, to tell this story. Uh, Félix and uh, Benjamin, could you talk a bit about becoming involved and how you, uh, how you got to know the characters and sort of uh, settled into the, the, the roles? Well, first of all, we didn't know each other, and uh, mm -hmm. when I did the casting, I uh, haven't, I didn't read the script before. I just got the the script after I, I got casted. So when I arrived to to the casting, and when I, I met Francois, it was kind of just uh, the name Francois Ozon, and that, <laughs> that's it. That's the only thing that <laughs> we knew about the project. And, you had the uh, scene to work. We had obviously, yeah, yeah. We had uh, one or two scenes to work. Uh, the, the first monologue in, in the in the de debut of the of the film, and uh, once he got us the script, uh, we uh, personally, I uh, I saw how important of a of a part it was and how many things I had to work on. And first, the the most important thing was uh, this guy right here. <laughs> which was David, the, the relationship with David. And uh, when Benjamin came, first of all, when, when I saw him, I didn't think that... <laughs> no, I didn't... Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't think that, that when I saw him, it was the idea of David that I had, but I thought that he could play it. He could, with some work and with some uh, push-ups, maybe because he was really... You know, <laughs> uh, he could do it. So, and we had a good connection. And uh, for you? And for me, uh, yes, I did a lot of push-ups. Uh, <laughs> I, I did like it. Um, that was such a, a great pleasure to to walk uh, with um, um, and to be directed by a, a such a old man like Francois. <laughs> Experience, uh, things like this. He made a lot of movies. So uh, that's very easy for me, I think, to, to be a young actor and to be on the set Uh, like this, uh, like you say, uh, Trevor is a wonderful uh, uh, sea seaside, seaside. How do you say? Seaside town. Seaside. Yes. And uh, from my side, I, I would say um, to play David, I, um, I didn't uh, ask to myself any question. I just uh, um, try to be in the presence with Felix and to share uh, emotions, like only this. And we spent a lot of times together uh, before the shooting, so we get uh, <laughs> so we get to know each other and to uh, becoming a little bit uh, Felix and Benjamin, kind of getting into the walls, getting into uh, our connection. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. You, you, uh, your performances—you have great chemistry, I think, and I. I mm was curious about how that developed, if it was something that pre-existed the film or if it was came out of conversations about the characters or uh, just sort of organically. Um. The chemistry for the characters was very important and the cast was very important. And actually I started uh, the casting uh, before the, the writing the script. It was important to fight the right actors to, because they have really the film on their shoulders. Did you find that writing the script uh, in some ways uh, emerged out of the casting decision? So you, you had found your, your performers and yes. that influenced First, first the actors and after the, the script. I had the book and mm -hmm. I actually I'm very close to the book. So I gave them the book to read and uh, I, be I, I had a little bit, begin I had began a little bit the script, but not so much. But with the two in mind, it was easier to, to, to have all this process of writing. Do you think of the film as sort of fitting into a tradition of sort of coming of age, young love stories? It definitely, it feels like a, 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 a sort of a representation of a genre uh, that's doing something different nonetheless. 
Yes, of course. Each time you make a film about teenager, very often it's a coming of age movie or a teen movie. But for me, what was important was to make the film for the teenager I was. Uh, you know, uh, when I was uh, 17, I would have loved to see this story on the big screen. It would, it would have been very important for me, for my process, for... For, um, and uh, I was very touched when the film was released to, 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 to realize that many young people came to see the film, P young people who didn't know the 80s, and uh, they were connected with this story today. And, uh, and I said, I, uh, I got my goal. Could you talk a bit about, uh, I found the, the music selections really interesting in, in as sort of a way of not both setting the mood and the tone uh, for this very sort of film with a very particular tone to it, but also setting you in a place and time. Uh, uh, I think the music, it's the music I was listening in the 80s and especially English music, English pop music, new wave music. Uh, the Cure, Depeche Mode were very popular in, uh, in France. And um, the, the, the difficulty was to, to find the song for the grave, you know, uh, because in the book, it's just um, a silly music from, uh, from Laurel and Hardy. Do you know Laurel and Hardy? So it was quite uh, bizarre. And, uh, and actually, uh, Felix was very helpful for that because I asked him to, because his father works in music and he's a, he's a musician too, he's a singer. And I asked him, do you have some ideas about uh, songs of the 80s? And uh, maybe, Felix, you can talk about it. Yeah, so he asked me that. <laughs> and I was just uh, listening every 80s songs, every, every hit. And I was actually listening uh, them with my mother. And she knew all of them. And I didn't know any. So that was funny to see the difference uh, between uh, ages. And uh, I came... Uh, I came to this song, Sailing, and now and I. But I Rossi, what? It's not the eighties; it's the seventies, actually. Yeah, but uh, mm. it was still on the playlist. It was yes. on the playlist, eighties song. So mm. for me, it was uh, I didn't <laughs> know in time where it was. So, and I heard the the lyrics, and uh, I was like, mm, I, I am sailing, I am sailing, but my character is sailing too. <laughs> I'm 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 in love. Oh, my character is in love too. I was like, oh, it resonates good uh, with the story, and so and I and it touched me actually. So I sent it to Francois and I really thought that he would say like every time before uh, no I don't like it that's not good uh, but he actually liked this one and <laughs> and we used it and but it was a challenge to dance on this song because it's not very moving so sometimes yeah. actors have good ideas it does happen and this song this song plays twice in the film right it, it sort of yes. comes back at the end yes in the nightclub it was improvisation yeah. and after for the grave did um, Felix and Benjamin, did you both have to learn how to sail for this? Uh, yes, we had to, especially him. The first day we tried to sail, he almost broke the boat. <laughs> he went straight through a wall because he didn't know right or left. He was like confused and he went straight to a wall and we almost cr crashed uh, the boat. But uh, eventually it looks like he's good, but he's not really. <laughs> <laughs> this is what uh, why I love so much the cinema. You can do a lot of things and people think, oh, he's good in sailing. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know how to say. <laughs> yeah, um, but if you buy the DVD, you can see mm, the bloopers mm. and you can see how we are in trouble and, <laughs> <laughs> and how it's hard to sail. You know, you can see how we're not that good. If you see it in the bonus, right. exclusive footage, extras, yeah. and yeah. we can see yes. my ass. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you talk a bit about uh, creating the the sort of look and feel of the '80s and the the production design and the costuming? Because it's subtle, and in some ways, you can watch this film and forget uh, that it's not taking place right now. But it's also uh, very effective. Uh, it's stylish. It's not very realistic with the 80s in France. Actually, with my costume designer, Pascaline Chavan, we, we watched many teen movies from America. Actually, we, we were used to watching at this time. So there are many, uh, many clothes with jeans. Bandana. Do you say bandana in America? Yes. Okay. So there are some, uh, you know, like uh, signs of the period which give you the mood of the period. But we didn't want to be too too much 80s. We we try to find the the 
the good details to give you the spirit of this time. Was this, was this uh, Benjamin and Félix, you both uh, weren't around in the 80s. Did you find this, did it, did it feel like you were making a period film or was that sort of in the background? Yeah, that was so, um, for me, when, when you play on the period movie, you have to play uh, like uh, you are in the 2020 and uh, you let the director uh, put the 80s and uh, the period on, on the set. And that was, yeah, wonderful. When, when we were on the set, uh, we really thought uh, that was uh, the 80s. And yeah, yeah th th this sounds like freedom. And we were in the 80s of François. We also, which was which wonderful I, 80s, which wonderful are wonderful, 80s. which are more colorful maybe than the 80s uh, of somebody else, maybe. Was uh, was the decision to structure the film almost as a almost as a mystery story with the sort of the framing narrative where you you learn that David has died at yes. the very beginning of the film? Was that uh, taken from the novel or was that yes. something you brought? Yes, it comes from the novel. My first idea was to to tell the story in a very classical, chronological way. But when I read again the book, I realized I love this puzzle construction, you know, and uh, that gives the opportunity to the audience to, to imagine uh, over thing, uh, some other things. And there is a mix of genre which, and tone in the film, which I like. And it comes really for, from the book, because on the book, you know for the first time what happened. I just hide the idea of, uh, of the grave and, uh, and the dance. But the, uh, in the book, you know that for, for, for the first, uh, first pages. So I, I like always to play with, with the audience. You know, I, I know it's disturbing, but it makes you work you know, during the film and you can imagine different things and make your own story. It's a little, uh, it's a surprisingly dark story with, with especially with uh, Alexi and his sort of fascination with death and, and yes. the fact that you know that the shadow of David's death is sort of hanging over the film. Um, and yet it's also very light. It's also very much about young love. And was yes. that a challenge to sort of balance those two? I think, you know, if this book was so cult in the 80s in France, it's because it arrives during AIDS period. And so many young people die at this time. Some uh, many gay uh, project in the book. It was not the intention of the author, of course, because he wrote the book before, but a kind of uh, metaphor of AIDS. Uh, you know, the fact, uh, the link between young people and death. And uh, I think that's why, that's why the, thing, the, the book was so important for, for my generation. Has the author of the novel seen the film and, and have you spoken yes. to him? Yes, he saw the film, he was very touched and uh, he fell in love with the two actors. He's very happy of the adaptation. Have you, uh, Felix and Benjamin, have you met the author or gotten to speak with him? We hmm? wish, we wish <laughs> not yet because of COVID, but we were supposed to go to England. England. But... It was not possible, no release in England too. I, I wish I can, we can meet him one day. It's re, it would be really, really moving for me to see him and just to, to, to have a deep conversation and to talk about the story and uh, everything. I wish. Well, when the, when the film had its release in France, were you surprised at all by its reception? Were there uh, any responses that you weren't anticipating? La réaction à la sortie du film en France, est-ce que ça a été comme vous vous attendez ou différente? Um, uh, it, it was it was a, a kind of political release because nobody wanted to be released after the lockdown. Everybody was afraid people don't come to the cinema, but actually people came to see the film, so it was important, and we we touched the young, uh, young people, so, so I was happy. But of course, it was not the same box office than some other of my films because of the COVID period. Um, I'm, personally, I'm very excited to, to have it released in America, and I think, I think audiences will really respond to it. Um, it's, a very, it's a crowd pleaser in some ways. It's a, it's a very moving film, and, and I... Uh, I, I expect that it will find an audience here once we, we have, have so. <laughs> access to theaters. 
Um, well, that's, I, I, I think that's about all the questions that I had. Um, but I wonder if you could just, just since we have a few more minutes, is there anything from the production that you could recall that... Um, Felix, Benjamin, do you want to say something? Something clever? Des souvenirs, <laughs> des anecdotes. Uh... <laughs> Putting you on the spot a bit. <laughs> <laughs> On vous entend pas. We don't hear you. Ah, ça y est, ça y est. C'est bon là? Oui. We said lots of clever things and now we forget, <laughs> we forget everything. It's too bad. No, no. I don't know what. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, we had yesterday very good, uh, very good news because the film uh, is nominated for the César. You know, and Felix and Benjamin, the two are nominated as best, uh, how do you say that? Best Espoir, revelation. best yes. revelation best of cover. the year. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's very difficult because I have to choose. <laughs> I have to vote for Felix or Benjamin. We choose. <laughs> and uh, Francois also has got uh, 10 other nominations for the movie. So we just get... for him, because he's a genius. No, not, no, for me. not just for him. <laughs> just for, for him. everybody, for the whole team. Oh, félicitations, that's superb. Uh, Thank you. It's very, very exciting. And uh, I, uh, I guess we can leave it here, but, but thank you all so much for, for joining us today. Thank and, you uh, to you and to the audience who watched the film. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, good luck. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.